Hey y'all. <laughs> it was me thinking I went live and my mic was still muted. And I'm like, hey y'all. And my mic was muted. <laughs> anyway, how are y'all doing? All right, let me shout y'all out. Melanin related. Hi, baby. Miss Vi with Sean. Hi, honey. Andrea's perspective. Hey, boo. Sexy Ray, Mikey, hey y'all. Um, vibes, I'm going to be in and out because I'm still working, but I'm catching up. Working. Period, girl, just catch that replay, honey. You know, it's some of us out here who be, you know, on our boss-ish. So I ain't even mad, girl. I got a lot of... um. I got a lot of mods in here tonight, so don't even worry, Miss Sean. Do what you got to do, girl. Um, I'm going to be real with y'all. Like, I wasn't going to completely cancel this live. I actually just had a work accident. Um, I was finishing up a little kid client like about 20 to 40 minutes ago. Hi, Angie. Hey, girl. Thank you so much for coming by. Uh, let me see, y'all, I'm here trying to get dressed, so I'm in and out. Okay, no problem, y'all, I get it. Like, y'all do what y'all gotta do. I am, Trust me, life be life. And hi, Robin. Um, so anyway, y'all, I was finishing up my my last little client for the day, a little girl. Y'all, she was giving me the blues, y'all. Like, <laughs> she didn't want her hair done. She was tired. She wanted McDonald's. Like, she just had a whole lot of stuff going on, y'all, so... Life with Miss D. Thank you so much. Happy welcome to my channel. It says you're a new watcher. That's what's up. Um, anyway, y'all. So I get to the end of her braids, y'all, and it's time for me to dip her braids. And she's still clowning. And so I go to get my kettle um so that I can dip her braids, y'all. And needless to say, the kettle dropped and it's like it it um shattered everywhere and all I could think about was um protecting the baby right like oh my god I can't burn this baby so I, it's like you can see something falling you know and you trying to do what you can do to you know protect you know a little child and so of course um I took the brunt of that y'all so <laughs> I have burned both y'all both of my feet oh my god it hurts so bad y'all so I was about to cancel this live, but this literally just happened like 20, 40 minutes ago. And I just felt like it was too close to showtime to cancel it. I mean, me canceling it is going to do what? Like my feet still going to hurt. So I would have just been in the bed off my feet or whatever. So here I am, y'all, burnt feet and all. <laughs> so a little life lesson here. You know, sometimes when you're a business owner or you work for yourself or whatever, like when you're serious and passionate about what you're trying to do and what you're trying to build, like sometimes, you know, you got to, you know, you got to do what you got to do. Right. So here I am, as promised. Um, Mua, hi. Good evening. Oh, my God. Yes, Andrea. Girl, my feet is hurting. Um, they're just really red right now, but they're starting to blister and like peel and all that. So I ain't gonna lie to y'all. I'm a little scared about what this is gonna look like in the morning. <laughs> Um, but the baby was okay. And that's all I was concerned about because I did not want to burn this baby. She was like three or four years old. So, um, but I'm okay. Um, or I will be. So I hope everyone is okay, Robin. Yeah, I'm sure everyone. I'm sure I, the, like I said, the baby's okay. I'm sure I'll be okay. Please show our lovely wholesome love. Oh, thank you, Melanie. So anyway, y'all, I probably won't be on as long, but y'all know I say that and then I'll be on here for 50 hours. Um, but I just want to talk about um, the topic of manipulation. Hi, Terry. Hi, Mama Two Kings. Oh, honey, I was waiting on this good word. Hey, boo, little foreign baby. <laughs> you know, girl, I'm going to be a, a black German here pretty soon. No, I'm just playing. <laughs> um, so, yeah. Um, let me see. Andrea says, I have a third degree burn on my back right now from getting my hair braided. So I know how it feels. Yes. And that water, I keep it very, very hot for my clients. So I definitely scald my feet and I had socks on y'all. So I think that's what made it worse because when the pot dropped, um, of course, my socks soaked up that water real fast and that water was scalding hot. And so, yeah, my feet is uh, 
very red and blistered and all type of stuff. Like it's ridiculous. And I'm not going to lie. It kind of scared me because when I was about, I would say 12 or 13 years old, I was with my dad for the summer. And, um, you know, back when we was kids, y'all, we was into like press on nails and stuff like that. And my mom would not allow me to get my nails done. And so we couldn't wait to get to my dad's because dad will always let us do the press on nails. And so I'm sitting there, we all watching TV and I go to open the nail glue, y'all, and there was no spout on the nail glue. And so when um, I opened it, the entire bottle of nail glue fell on my leg. And so at the time, y'all, that was back when bell bottoms was a thing. So my jeans were super, super tight and then bell bottom at the bottom. And so I spilt that whole thing of nail glue on my leg. And I don't know if y'all remember back in the day, but nail glue used to burn, like even when you touched it on your skin, like, and so it touched my, like it, I, I spilt it and I could see my legs smoking, like steaming from the glue. So I jumped up and ran to the bathroom and snatched my bell bottoms off, like snatched them down because my legs burning and I ripped like a hole in my leg. So I have a third degree burn already on my thigh, on my right thigh. Um, it's probably the size of uh honestly probably like a little tangerine orange like that's how big it is <laughs> and so um I was trying to hurry up and get it done like get it fixed before telling my dad until I realized when I ripped my jeans down my skin came with it and so then I had to tell my dad and then you know dads you know men don't know yeah he put me in an alcohol bath <laughs> And it just made it worse. And so by the time I went back to my mom's, like a week or two later, it was infected and it was just a mess, y'all. And so I almost had to get like a skin graft and all of that um, or whatever. So honestly, today kind of scared me when that water, when that pot fell, because I'm like, oh my God, like all I could think of is no way I'm going to have another third degree burn on my feet. Okay, listen, I got cute feet and I would like for them to stay cute. You know what I'm saying? So I was a little bothered, y'all. I'm like, oh, gosh. So I kept thinking, oh, gosh, girl, get these socks off real quick or whatever before this hot water soak in on your skin, you know, and then you rip off skin on your feet. Like, that would just be terrible. So you need to go get some silver cream actually from the pharmacy. Thank you, Cheryl. I was definitely looking into that. I'm going to have to get something. So far, I've just put, like, cocoa butter um, Vaseline on it. I honestly don't even know... I don't even know what to do. I'm going to be real with y'all. <laughs> I'm going to be real with y'all. But it does hurt really, really bad. Yes, I don't know about how that burned me. Yeah, like it's it's bad. It's bad. Um, But anyway, I don't want to keep you guys long. That is not the point of this live. Um, I just want to get it in and, you know, get in and do it and get off so that you guys can go back to your evening. I don't want to be selfish of your time, but I do appreciate you guys coming through, kicking it with me. Um. Andrea says, I hate to wear clothes with my back out. Yes, and that's me with shorts. In the summertime, like, I prefer to wear, like, longer shorts because every time I wear short shorts, they're like, oh, my God, what happens to your leg? And, and then you tell them the story, and they don't even believe it. Like, I have family members to this day that still believe that that's not the story. You know what I'm saying? Like, they really feel like I made that up. Like, maybe I was abused or, <laughs> like, my dad burned me purposely, and I'm covering for him. Like, y'all crazy. I don't love nobody. OK, I don't love nobody on the face of this earth that much to be covering for them if they hurt me in that way. You got me. You got me messed up. <laughs> girl, you need me to take over. Listen, Sean, because, girl, I'm big struggling over here. Like my foot is hurting so bad. <laughs> but thank you for your friend, Sexy Ray. Thank you, Andrea. We pray your burn heals. I'll be OK, y'all. I'll be OK. I'm I'm, uh, you know, I'm adaptable. I'll be OK. So anyway, um, the title of my live is The Art of Manipulation. And I just wanted to talk about this because I think um, with the way society and stuff is set up, a lot of us um, are being manipulated in a lot of ways. Like if you pay attention to a lot of the entertainment and things that is being posted and shared all over social media, half the time, we don't know if we're looking at um, a skit or if we're looking at, you know, a real life scenario, right? Like people stage a lot of things and then we start believing something and y'all know how it goes when I talked about on my live yesterday or two days ago, um, how once we are like the way our brain works, like once we believe something like 
that's just it for us, right? For a lot of us, it's the end all be all. And so the art of manipulation is only successful when the manipulator remains undetected, right? And I think that is why a lot of us get manipulated because it's usually coming from someone who you would least expect, right? Like no possible way, like that, no, they're not being manipulative. Like they're so this or, oh, they're so sweet or, oh, they're so loving or they, you know, they help everybody or whatever. Like that is the, that is the trick um, and the ultimate goal when it comes to manipulation. And so the greatest manipulation is to convince others that they are in control when in fact you are the puppet master pulling the strings, right? And that is actually a famous quote um, by Robert Greene. I don't know if you guys know who that is. If you don't, check him out. He writes really great, insightful information. I read a lot of his books and I watch a lot of his content. Um, But I loved how he summed up that you know, manipulation like itself, like the greatness of it is that it convinces other people that they are in control. You know what I'm saying? And for those of us ladies who are married or in relationships, we can understand exactly what that is, right? Because let's be real, we know how to manipulate our man to do and say what we want him to do or say, right? And so that's a great example of manipulation. Of course, not for, you know, I hope anyway, not for a bad thing. But again, it's just a form of thinking a person is in control when really you're the one actually in control. And so um, this quote, in my opinion, also emphasizes, you know, the deceptive nature of manipulation and the power it grants to those who can, you know, covertly control others. Like think about how you may interact with your young kids, right? For instance, I have a five-year-old. And so like when I want her to feel like, hi, Alicia, Thank you, Andrea. (laughs) Um, When I want her to feel that she is in control, I will say, okay, would you like to do this or this, right? She don't know that I'm still in control because I have controlled the options to her. But in her mind, she's in control, you know, because, oh, I get to pick, you know what I'm saying? But she's not paying attention to the fact that these are the options I'm presenting to her. You know what I'm saying? So that's a perfect example of how like, you know, this deceptive nature of manipulation, you know, it will make you feel like you're the one in control. And really you're not. It's the other way around. Um, Hi, Alicia. Hi, my black is beautiful. Hi, Miss White. Welcome, y'all. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Um, So that was just a quick example. Um, So understanding this concept can help you be more cautious, you know, and discerning with your interactions with people, especially people that you don't really know, right? And let's be real, when we're interacting with people that are not like our family, blood relatives, close friends, you know, people we've known for a good amount of time, we really don't know who we're working with or who we're dealing with or, you know, anything of that nature. And so it will help you, you know, recognize potential manipulative tactics and protect yourself from being exploited. And so when I say exploited, that means basically being used in an unfair way. And I think this is one thing that irritates me about um, manipulation. And I don't want to jump ahead of myself, but I feel like when manipulation is put into play, it is definitely a way to exploit someone, right? Because most manipulators or people who are manipulative, they go after people who are vulnerable. You know what I'm saying? Like, And when I say vulnerable, um, it's like you are basically in a state of feeling unprotected, you know, whether that's physically or emotionally. So then they swoop in, you know, and they make you feel like I'm protecting you. I got your back. You know, I'm, you know what I'm saying? And then like, I think about it all the time with, um, you guys see like Lifetime movies and things all the time. Like there's this one show I watched recently on Netflix and it's called Dirty John and there's two seasons. And so in the second season, Um, It's about the story of Betty Broderick. And I just looked at how this man who she loved, I think they were married like 16 years. This man, y'all, and I really encourage y'all to watch it. Um, I'm going to put it right here on the screen. Um, Let me type it in, y'all. My bad. I'm distracted. (laughs) Um, So basically, like this man um, divorced her, right? And um, he left her. He left her for his secretary or whatever. They had been married 16 years. She, um, in the beginning of the relationship, you know how it goes with us women. We're all in. We're fully committed. We love our man, all that. And so she was the one working 
Like she was the breadwinner. She was putting him through stool, high truth slayer um, and all of that. And so, um, of course, he gets to a great level in his career. And then now he's feeling himself. Right. He's making like ridiculous money. I think they said like 100 K a month or something, which probably was an exaggeration because he was a lawyer. But Jesus, 100 K is a lot. So anyway, um, so, of course, he gets to this point where he's feeling himself. He hires this new younger um, secretary. And then, of course, he starts having an affair with her. But um, and, you know, like when you're in a relationship or whatever, like, you know, your your person. Right. Whether you dating men, women, cats, dogs, whatever, you know, your mate. Right. And so she had peaked like, OK, things are different. He's probably seeing somebody, whatever. And, um, you know, so she started asking him, like, yo, what's up? Like, you know things ain't looking right, blah, blah, blah. And he's making her believe that she's tripping. She's just imagining this and this is not what is happening, right? Only for her to find out later that the, everything she thought was exactly what it was, right? And so long story short, y'all, she ends up tweaking out. Like she's acting out, she's doing all these crazy things and people, <laughs> true slay, <laughs> she said not cats and dogs. Um, she's acting out, she's doing all these things, right? And showing out and people are like, oh, she's being childish. She's being, you know, she's in denial. He doesn't want her and all that. While all those things are true, they were missing the point. And she was being manipulated. She was being gaslighted. She was being, you know, thought like he was doing certain things to antagonize her, you know, to make her behave a certain way or to act out a certain way so that to the world, it looked like she was out of control, that she was, you know what I'm saying? She was um, hard to um, get along with. She was problematic. She was, you know what I'm saying? Like delusion and all this, but they were missing like the little digs he would do, you know, like little stuff like the new girlfriend or the new secretary that he had an affair with, you know, she was an on his answering machine at home, like, oh, you've, you've reached the Brodericks, but he's still legally married to his actual wife, like little stuff like that. Um, and then taking custody of her children and then, you know, telling her, um, she can see her kids and then saying, no, just kidding. I can't, I changed my mind. And, you know, just taking everything from her, stripping this woman of everything, manipulating her in the situation because the same law degree that she helped him get and achieve, right, is the one he used to victimize her and to antagonize her. And he knew what buttons to push because he's been married to this woman for 16 years. You know what I'm saying? And now look what, you know what I'm saying? You're just going to ditch her and leave her alone and she should just get over it and, and move on. Right. And so that was just a quick example of manipulation, you know, how, how it can work and how it can look to other people because people will be like, oh, like this person's tripping or, you know, a master manipulator can make a picture or make something look a certain way so that the masses will believe whatever it is that they're trying to make it look like. Um, so anyway, manipulators create like a carefully crafted, you know, illusion of choice. Right. And so I recently had a client um, who had shared that her husband goes against the grain, like automatically, like no matter what, like if everybody's like, I want pizza, he'll be like, well, I want chicken. Like, that's just him. Right. And so we were sitting there laughing because she told me, she said, when it comes to certain things, I will say the exact opposite. Um, of what I want him to say, just because I know he's going to go against the grain. So then I can get the actual results of what I want. Right. And so we're laughing about that. But I'm thinking to myself, wow, like what a way to manipulate somebody. And he doesn't even know it. He doesn't even know it. Why? Because in his mind, he's in control. He's in control because I don't want to do that. I want to do this. Not realizing she's the one that's the puppet master because she's getting him to do exactly what she wants him to do. And he don't even realize it. He hasn't even picked up on it. So that was another example of how manipulation can work and, you know, things you should pay attention to. Um, and so this is why it's so vitally important, you know, for you to move based on your genuine desires rather than being swayed by manipulation tactics of those disguised as helping you or caring about you. Right. Because that's what happens. Like a lot of us, it, it is human nature. Like we want to feel a part of something. We want to feel included. We want to feel liked and all that. Hi, Jackie. Um or whatever. And so that is all great. But the thing about that is it sometimes can put you in a position to be vulnerable and it can make you an easy victim of manipulation because people can pick up on, um, you know, those who are quote unquote thirsty <laughs> for attention or thirsty for connects or thirsty for networking and things like that. And, and you can get easily preyed on. 
Um, so um, we have all been guilty, you know, of calling our circle, quote unquote, right? Like when we're pondering on something in an attempt to figure out, you know, what we should do in a scenario or what decision we should make. And if we are honest, we either have been like convinced of what we should do and we'll just go with that or we will become more confused and overwhelmed and still don't know what to do. Again, opening yourself up to be manipulated and you're not even realizing it. Um, And I've said it and I've seen it so many times on um, social media, like the best way to make a bad decision is to get a whole bunch of advice from a whole bunch of people. You know what I'm saying? Because now you're either more confused and you still don't know what to do, or you're going to make a choice based on a bunch of people not qualified, you know, to necessarily help you in that choice, which makes you easily to be swayed one way or the other. Um, so the manipulator, when it comes to the manipulator, like the power lies in their ability to exploit vulnerabilities and manipulate emotions for their own personal gain, right? And so what is a vulnerability? It's basically, like I said earlier, it's the state of being unprotected, whether physically or emotionally, you know what I'm saying? And people can sense that. That's why it's so easy for people who are insecure to become a victim of manipulation. People can sense that. And true master manipulators can pick up on that. You know what I'm saying? Like they can they can sniff it right out because this is what they do. Like this is their thing, right? And so um, manipulation thrives in an environment of an uncertainty and fear. Hence, like I said, making people who are insecure very easy victims. And so I want to leave y'all with this, right? Manipulators will intentionally distort the reality of something to gain control over their victim. So that was my take home point for y'all. I really just want y'all to pay attention to manipulation, whether you're being manipulated by social media, marketing, uh, people in your life, circumstances, uh, and whatever. And, and, and pay attention to different things that people use to manipulate you, right? Like people manipulate you by, um, by money. That's a big one. People love to manipulate you by money. Um, people will manipulate you by, um, you know, pretending to be, you know, on your side, you know, giving you favor and kudos and extra this and extra that, you know what I'm saying? Think about it. Like, um, for instance, I was recently going to either sell my house or rent my house. Right. And so I started getting all type of, um, business cards and marketing material and all type of stuff in my um, mailbox, in my door, in my everything, because guess what? My house is on the market. So it's like, oh, well, I know you have, you know, a property manager, or I know you have a real estate agent, but you should, you should go with me. And this is why, you know what I'm saying? So then they'll offer you extra incentives, you know what I'm saying? To sway you one way or the other. And so that is how life will play out, right? Because if you're so easily swayed, just because someone convinced you that you should be, you know, you should go one way or the other, you got to know who you are and you got to stand in that because otherwise they will swipe, they will swipe you so quick (laughs) and then boom there you go right thanks so much um just lovely me um jimmy jim how are you for this necessary reminder you're speaking big facts thank you so much i appreciate you for coming through i haven't seen you in a while how are you um hi sabrina how are you baby um, so yeah, like, so that's why I said, like, you have to know, like, that's the, and I, I don't want to say it's the trick of life, but it kind of is, right? Because it's so simple. It's so cliche. And I feel like a lot of us miss the mark because things are cliche, right? Like, for instance, some of us have been born and raised in church. And so certain Bible scriptures, you know, come second nature. Hi, Robin. Hi, Miss Judy. How are you? So many things happen or or so cliche to where it's like, no, I already know that every I already know that already. I already know that already. And then you it goes right over your head. And then boom, now you're a victim to some shit that you wasn't even <laughs> expecting to be a victim of, you know, or you end up in a scenario and you're trying to figure out how you even ended up there. You know what I'm saying? So just pay attention, y'all, to your vulnerabilities and when you're in your feelings and you're emotional or you're just in a rough place in life and who you're confiding in and things like that, because people will take advantage of that, you know, if they are master manipulators and they will figure out a way, you know, to get to you. You know what I'm saying? I remember I was talking to a client and she was telling me like, oh, I'm seeing this new guy. And he asked me, what are my weaknesses? And I looked at her like, okay, girl. And what did you say? (laughs) 
<laughs> it's just like, why you say it like that? I'm like, because girl, it's the fact that he blatantly asked you, what was your, what was your weaknesses? I was like, did you tell him? She was like, yeah. I'm like, are you slow? She was like, why you say that? I said, because girl, like he, like now he's blatant about his manipulation. <laughs> I say, because I promise you, hi, Madeline. How are you, baby? I'm like, I promise you. It's just like, and, and I don't want to make this about relationships or nothing, but it's just like when you're you're dating or you're meeting someone new, the worst thing you can do is tell them how the, the last person hurt you. Because guess what's going to happen? They're going to hurt you the same way. Why? Because you don't express that they hurt you and you kept forgiving them and doing it over and over again. So they know, oh, okay, so this girl got a high tolerance for bullshit. So now I can feed her some bullshit and do some stuff. You know what I'm saying? And then boom, you know, and then you pissed off like, dang, I told you this. Why would you do this to me? Because, girl, you gave him the tea. Girl, you gave him the code. You gave him the key. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And so, like I said, I don't want y'all to think about this just in the context of relationships. You know what I'm saying? But, uh, Mua, thank you so much. I appreciate you so much, baby. Um, I don't want you to think about this just in relationships, but I'm just saying, um, well, romantic relationships, I should say, because it is relationships, you know, how you relate to other people. But you just have to be standing who you are, yo, and don't let nobody sway you one way or the other in what your beliefs are. You know, who you know who you are at your core, and you need to be true to that, no matter what's going on, no matter what type of, um, you know, benefit you might see from it or what you think you might be getting. You know what I'm saying? Because if we honest, we a lot of us get manipulated because we if we're if we really gonna be honest about it, we have our own ulterior motives, right? So we thinking, yeah, if I get money from this person, or yeah, if I get this from that person, you know what I'm saying, it's gonna help me. And you're not realizing that you're being used, you're getting played like a fiddle. <laughs> you getting played like a fiddle because just like you thinking like that, they're thinking like how they're thinking. You know what I'm saying? Like I have to figure out how to get to this person or how to get this person to do what I want them to do. You know what I'm saying? For my personal gain. So I can look a certain way. So I can do certain things. You know what I'm saying? So you're thinking in a selfish way, not even realizing you're being, you're getting the wool pulled right over your eyes. I'm amazing. I hope everyone is also doing the same. Yes, yes, yes. Right, Melody, you better tell them, girl. She, <laughs> but just like y'all, my clients know I'm crazy. And I'll be like, girl, are you slow? What's wrong, girl? <laughs> you feeling all right, girl? You want a glass of water? Like you tripping. <laughs> so they know I'll be, <laughs> they know I'll be with it. Like, girl, not don't come here telling me this craziness because you know I'm gonna tell you that you're crazy. He definitely preyed on her weaknesses. No, for real. He did. He did. Hi, Lux Pearl. How are you, baby? Hi, Lysander. I'm trying to catch up on the chat. Um, when a man asks me, what are you looking for in a man? I never answer. I say, look, organic chemistry. So just be who you are. Let me see if we're coming. Exactly, True Slayer. That is the perfect answer, y'all. Like, that's exactly what I'm talking about. Like, it doesn't make sense to, you know, get yourself wrapped up because people and they, and people ask innocently. You know what I'm saying? It's just like I always get nervous, like when I meet a stranger and they're always like, where are you from? What do you do? Like, what does your husband do? Like, where where do you live? Like, you know, when it and when it's too much too soon, it's like, girl, why? Why you want to know all that? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, girl, uh, then you're going to start getting some bl some either some blank bland answers or you finna get a lie straight up. Because, girl, why is you in my business, girl? Hand me that. Hand me that. They're like, hey, you what? Hey, girl, my business? Because you all up in it. Don't be worrying about what I got going on in my real life if I don't know you like that. You know what I'm saying? But you got to pay attention and be a little more cautious about things that you're giving out to people when it comes to you and your life. Because people be using that stuff and they taking notes and tally on what your weaknesses are. You know what I'm saying? That's why I don't let people. It's just like I was telling y'all, like when I was into the saga, right? I share with y'all now that at one point I had got demonetized for a couple months. But during that time, y'all didn't know that. And I purposely did not say that. Why? Because I didn't want the enemy to know that they had gotten me. You know what I'm saying? That they had slightly defeated me for a short amount of time, right? Because that's when the manipulate, like that's that gives them that satisfaction. Like my manipulation worked, right? I got to them. I did what I needed to do. You know what I'm saying? Like I'm mission accomplished type deal, right? Thank you so much, Melanie. I appreciate you so much. Be sure to check your cash out. Oh, thank you so much, Melanie. I love you, girl. You know, or whatever. And so that's why I was saying, like, you have to be careful, y'all. Hold on. Let me catch up. Catch up, catch up, catch up. Absolutely, Ashley. It's what you answer to. Hail to the no, I am 
on my shit. I see you move around. Yes, but people will pick you. Like they'll pick your brain. Like or they'll ask innocently. Like I've had people that'll you know try to fake a connection with me because they think I got you know some type of I don't know motion clout or whatever you know based off of my platform or or whatever I got going on in my real life. Like you know I do hair and maybe they trying to get in the hair game. I remember I had a girl that um I didn't even know I don't know this girl I never met her a day in my life and she messaged me and was like yeah can you share my page like I'm new to the area and I'm trying to get clients and, I, and I'm thinking well damn girl how you doing who are you like you know what I'm saying like ain't nothing wrong with that and don't get me wrong I don't mind people um I don't mind people uh you know shouting people out and helping them or whatever but it's like damn like can you speak first and introduce yourself like can we build a rapport first before you just come over and be like yeah can you share this for me like yeah can you do this you know what I'm saying because then it looks weird it looks freaking weird because it's like well damn like you ain't even gonna hide the fact <laughs> you know what I'm saying that you literally finna use me you know what I'm saying and, and people will do that again manipulation because they'll make you think oh i'm your friend you know or you're so or they'll butter you up like oh you're such a great person you're such a giver and that's why this and that you know what i'm saying like they will say the right things because now you're feeling good about whatever it is you you they finna ask you about <laughs> and then boom you just play it right into their hand manipulation manipulation and like i said manipulation works in so many different ways but most people like that are manipulators they're trying to win favor over you or get make you feel that there is um you know like you're in control when really they are in control i'm good love on a cruise with my baby birthday stop by to show some love oh period where you cruising to lux that's dope i wish i could cruise i me and my husband um got on a boat several several years ago uh we were coming from alaska and i was sick y'all i was cool the first day and the second day i was sick as hell like i had to get the drama mean and all that and i was like damn like i was actually excited you know to get on the boat but y'all i was sick as hell and so i've been scared to cruise ever since then <laughs> and that was many years ago like probably I don't know, 13, 14 years ago, and I'm still scared to cruise because I'm like, well, I would be upset if I spent all that money to cruise and then I'm sick the whole time. So definitely don't give them the playback to your heart. No, for real, true slayer, because then you in a hole, you up a creek, basically. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So save yourself that stress and that upset, you know? Hi, Lisa. How are you, baby? You know, so... Um, like I said, I think that pretty much sums up in a nutshell, y'all. I don't want to keep y'all too long. Like I said, I done had a work accident. My damn foot is hurting so bad, y'all. <laughs> and um, I'm scared to see what it's going to look like tomorrow. So I don't know. I feel like I should just go stick it in a bucket of ice or something. <laughs> like it hurts so bad. Um, Look, like said, don't be scared. They are addictive. I know because I have so many people that are constantly cruising. So but enjoy your trip, Lux. Have a have a good trip. I hope you have a good, safe trip in return. So playbook, I meant. No, for real, true slayer. And that's with anything in life, right? Like too much too soon is always a red flag. So like I said, just be, a, be careful, y'all. Like um, pay attention to when you're being manipulated. Um, also, I want to say pay attention to people's credibility too, right? Because uh, people will also use like their credentials or their credibility or or the way their their reputation or street cred and I say that in quotes looks they will use that as a way to um you know to get you like oh you know I'm good for it like these people rock with me or that person does this for me or oh I connected with that person before you know what I'm saying like they will do whatever it's almost like a selling piece you know like they will market themselves to you in a way so you'll be like oh well this person got to be legit, you know what I'm saying? Because if all these people, you know, dealt with them or, you know, deal with them or whatever, like, I mean, think about it, like with celebrities or certain influencers, right? Like if we say, oh, go check out this person, you know what I'm saying? Like you'll go check them out off the strength of somebody else's word, you know what I'm saying? So that can give you a false sense of reality, like, oh, like this person must be good because all these people rock with them or or hang with them or, you know, whatever. Like you have to pay attention to that because you will walk right into a trap of being manipulated. Lisa says, so if you're fit. I, 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 might, I probably will, Lisa, but I'm so scared to be real because, um, I don't know, y'all. I'm just scared. I got, I got PTSD, y'all, because I don't want to lose the skin on my foot. 
because I burnt the hell out my foot, uh, like the thing broke, the glass shattered, everything. Like it's just so bad. So I appreciate you, Angie. Thank you so much for coming through and not doing a drive-by. Like you actually kicked it in the chat. Thank you. I appreciate that. Some real support. Hey, Ashley, I'm just coming in. Hi, Ace Dogs. How you doing, baby? I hope you had a great, wonderful, productive day. Soak your foot in Epsom salt. Yeah, that's what Miss Lisa said. I may try that because that's like two or three of y'all seeing that. Yeah, it hurt y'all. Like it's starting to blister and everything. <laughs> I'm like, yo. And my husband always telling me about how, how freaking pretty. He's like, you got pretty feet. And um, and girl, now I'm scared. Like, oh no, I'm finna have Jeeper Creeper's feet. Like <laughs> all blistered up and crazy and swollen. Like it just hurts, y'all. So it's gonna get worse tomorrow. Go to the ER. Lisa, yeah, I know. I'm scared. I'm scared. I'm scared. I'm scared. <laughs> so let me see. You should probably go to the doctor. You don't want it to get infected. Robin, it's not open, baby. It's not open. It's just really red right now and it's starting to blister. I'm going to be real with y'all. I'm not a fan of the ER. I'm just going to be all the way real with y'all because they play in your face. Like they will sit you in there for six to eight hours and give you some ibuprofen and tell you to follow up with your, um, with your, your doctor. You know what I'm saying? So if that's what they're going to do to me anyway, y'all, I would rather just wait for my doctor. You know what I'm saying? They, I'm just over it. But I'm going to do some research. I'm very much like, um, I don't want to say I'm a natural naturalist or nothing, but girl, no shade. I got all type of herbs and vitamins and like I believe in natural care, you know, until of course you need some type of prescribed medication or whatever. So I'm going to see what I can come up with, y'all. But right now, this mug is just hurting. <laughs> so I will at least soak it tonight and just see what's going on. Like, my skin is also kind of trying to peel on me now. So I'm trying to honestly just leave it alone, maybe soak it, because I don't want my skin to rub off, like, any more than it already is. Angie stuck with me in my life today. Oh, period. Shout out to Angie. I appreciate her so much. Miss White says, bio oil prevents scarring. Thank you, Miss White. And I definitely have some. So I will, I told y'all, I'm all about the natural stuff. I have all type of castor oil and I take different herbs and things like that. So trust me, I probably got all this stuff y'all saying. Yes, honey, I'm ready for the weekend. Period. And I got clients all day tomorrow, y'all. <laughs> I got clients all day tomorrow. And I'm like, oh, I hope I can walk tomorrow. <laughs> or I hope I can stand on it. So my husband's like, well, you're going to have to sit down and do hair because I said, see, but this is why I'm trying to get out the hair game permanently because I don't have time for that. Like, I, I understand this about, you know, the things that I do, like with the field that I work in. And this is not the only thing that I do. I do a few different things, but this is why I want to do something more residual. You know what I'm saying? And, and that's why I love my YouTube channel because sick, dead uh in the hospital or not i can give content on my youtube just saying <laughs> i can come kicking and talking with y'all all the time and that income doesn't stop but when it comes to like hair or any type of physical labor when you are a business owner it sucks when you have an injury or a health issue because you know what i'm saying like you <laughs> once you get hurt or injured now you got to sit out and to be real with y'all, my books is heavy right now because I'm like, this is the last, I think, four weeks that I'll be servicing, you know, my area because I'm leaving, I'm moving. So everybody's like panicking and stuff. So I don't want to be canceling on people, you know, and all that at this point, because it's just going to create a lot more panic. So hi, Lolita. How you doing, baby? Thanks for having me. Always just lovely me, girl. You are always welcome. I appreciate you. And I, I like peace. And you are definitely full of peace. So you're always welcome here. Me too, Miss Lisa loves natural remedies. Me too, Miss Lisa. I will try a natural remedy before anything. I swear. I'll be like, what herbs can I take for a headache? <laughs> like, for real, like, I might need to see somebody. Like, I probably need to be on a reality show. I have all type of herbs and vitamins and stuff in my cabinet. Tons of it. Like, I promise you, I probably got the, the fix somewhere in here. 
Um, True Slayer says facts. I check all of my own vitals at home before I go to the ER. Thanks to COVID, I have the tools. No, for real, Miss True Slayer. And I do too. Like I have like a blood pressure cuff. Like I don't play y'all. Uh, I take my health serious. So that's why I said, I'm just going to see what happens. Because even if I go to the ER, y'all, uh, they're going to have me sitting there for eight hours. My foot still going to be hurting and burning. <laughs> I'm going to get up in the morning and be tired because I'm going to be at the ER till five o'clock this morning. <laughs> And they're going to just be like, yeah, go get some ointment and good night. So <laughs> I'd rather just do that from the start. Don't go to the ER. Go to an urgent care for walk-in clinic. Miss Judy, that's exactly what I do. Um, but it's after six now here. And so most of them have, have closed for the day. So we'll see what it looks like tomorrow. If it is still... Um, you know, if it's not better or it's hurting more or if it's worse in any way, then yeah, I'll definitely go to an urgent care because that'll be in and out. I can get in and out within like an hour and I'll be fine. Apple cider vinegar will also take the soreness away. Thank you, Madeline. And I do have some of that. <laughs> Thank you. Um, it's so many beautiful souls in the chat. No, for real. We do try to keep it a good vibe over here. So thank you so much, Angie, for real. Like we try to keep it, you know, we try to keep it positive if we can. Alicia said, wow, yes, girl. <laughs> I'm so scared by my foot. Like, uh-uh, I can't have no ugly feet. <laughs> this is the vain side of Ashley Chats, y'all. I mean, well, but girl, like, God bless me with some beautiful feet. Like, I'm going to need for them not to be all burnt up and stuff. Like, I'm going to be upset. Lux Pearl says, what you do, Ash? Braids. I do, Lux. I braid. Yep, I'm a braider, baby. Yep, yep, yep. Judy says, hey, chat, y'all, I'm working my overtime because I had to take a nap. Chemo pills, they takes a toll on me. Uh, Miss Judy, you take chemo pills? What is it? How is that experience if you're able to, if you're able to say? I know you're at work. Hi, Cynthia. Lisa said urgent care. Yeah, definitely. I'm going to see what it's looking like in the morning. I'm going to soak it and stuff tonight and put some ointments and things like that on it. Take, take my herbs. And then we'll see what it do in the morning, y'all. <laughs> but it's it's blistering right now. So we'll see. We'll see what happens. I'm just glad I got that sock off in time because y'all, if I'd have left that on there, it might have been some skin come with it. Um, so yeah, Miss Judy, if you do have, if you're able to say or you're willing to share, I would love to to know um about that. Um, but anyway, y'all, I do appreciate y'all coming through. Um, okay, she says, I take low dose chemo pills for my severe aggressive rheumatoid arthritis. It sucks, they drain my energy because I'm on the highest dose. Okay, Miss Judy. Okay, well, I hope that, that that gets better for you. Um, man, you know, us women, we be going through a lot medically, y'all. Like, it's crazy. Like, I literally, um, I could listen. <laughs> I don't even want to get into that because that's a whole nother live. But man, we go through a lot as women with our bodies. And I was just having this conversation with my client today. And I was like, you know, I wish people would stop making comments about women's weight, right? Because you don't understand why a woman is overweight or you don't understand why a woman is very small or, or whatever the case. Like, you don't know why a person is the way that they are when it comes to a woman and her weight. And I wish society would back off. You know what I'm saying? Like, you could go to the hospital with a headache and they will tell you, <laughs> oh, it's because you overweight. Oh, you got migraines because you overweight. Oh, your foot hurt? Oh, because you overweight. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And not looking at, like, for instance, something I struggle with, and not to put my business on Front Street, but one of the many women problems that I have is I have endometriosis, y'all. And so with endometriosis, it's basically like an inflammatory um, disease, basically. Um, and so what happens is, is like the, like the internal tissues and things from like your uterus and things grows outside of that and it will connect to like other major organs right and so with that um happening um it can create a lot of scar tissue it creates a, a lot of chronic flam uh, inflammation you're in a lot of pain like pelvic pain it really messes with your cycles if you still have one like super heavy cycles like it's just insane right and so um 
like the thing with that is it also causes a lot of weight gain or it can because of the chronic inflammation you know you're constantly bloated or you know just different things you know and so I can personally say I've struggled with my weight for many many years because of other female problems you know from being on different birth controls and you know just trying to figure it all out right and it's frustrating because I have lived most of my adult life overweight according to the BMI calendar that they have out here or whatever but the thing for me is is stop commenting on other women's weight and stuff because let's be real like like I said I've been overweight most of my adult life according to that BMI thing but I have not been a person that eats a lot of food I don't like I order happy meals and kids meals and stuff when I eat out you know what I'm saying or I'll buy regular food like at a you know we go out to dinner and I always have to have a to-go box you know what I'm saying so um like please y'all like don't don't, don't be a part of the problem when it comes to society making comments about women's weight because a lot of us women are really battling a lot of um, health problems that we can or cannot help, right? For instance, endometriosis, that's not curable. I can only manage that, you know what I'm saying? And so I recently now have to take a new medication trying to balance out the overproduction of estrogen, you know what I'm saying? And like, not only that, I've had a hysterectomy, you know what I'm saying? Like I've done everything I know to do. I've had some of the endometriosis like extracted via surgery and things like that. And I still have so many problems and I have gotten serious about my weight and things like that. And so um, in the last year, I've lost about 60 pounds, which I'm proud of, but there's still so much more that I would like to lose. And me battling and struggling with endometriosis interferes with that. You know what I'm saying? So you might go somewhere, especially us. Y'all know how when we go home and your grandma be like, oh, you done gained 10 pounds. Oh, you done gained some weight. You know, <laughs> They can't think of nothing else to say. They got to comment on your weight, whether you lost weight, gained weight or whatever. <laughs> you know, we'd be having family members like that. And it's like, y'all, let's stop doing that to each other. Hi, Chris. Keisha, I'll be on these for life. All the other meds didn't take, didn't make my immune system stop attacking my body. Many don't know it's autoimmune disease. And you know what, Miss Judy, I'm going to be real with you. I really think that I may have an autoimmune disease, to be real. Like, I think that that's a thing and I need to get tested for it. And I, and I will shortly. But that is, like, I have so many weird things happening. Like, I never had eczema. Now I got, like, eczema. And sometimes it's really ridiculous and out of control, you know. And so, um, like you were saying with the autoimmune disease, it basically means, like, your body turns on itself. And again, people who have these type of autoimmune diseases may struggle with weight. You know what I'm saying? Like it may go up and down, but you don't know that. And then you'll make a comment about somebody's weight, not realizing that they doing everything they can. Shoot, some of us be borderline starving and shit, hoping, you know, that it's going to help us lose weight or control our weight or maintain our weight or something. And you still gaining and don't even know what the hell you're doing. It's like, damn, I ain't even eat how I gain weight. <laughs> I know I'm new here. I love listening to your voice. Um, the content created on Facebook was knife and acid attacked on live streams. A good content to cover. Okay. Um, Facebook was knife and acid attacked on live stream. Okay. I'm going to make a, I will make a note of that. You write that down real quick. And um, for those of you who come on my community wall and things like that, I always reach out to me if you do have a topic that you'd like for me to look into because I'm not opposed. I can't guarantee I will cover it, but I definitely will look into it. And if it's something that I think I can cover, I will. I can ask it. I'm trying to make a note real quick on my iPad. Okay. Um, so thank you, um, Life with Miss D. And Life with Miss D, do you have a, do you go live on your channel, honey? Like, do you have a channel? Because I would love to support you as well. Um, Alicia said, I lost 60 pounds in three months and it feels good. Period, Alicia. Kill it, girl. Period. Girl, it took me a whole year to lose my 60 pounds. <laughs> it took me a whole year, girl. A whole year. And some change. Due to my knee going horribly bad, I can't exercise much. So, ooh, it is belly weight sucks. Yeah, you know, and that's why I said, like, it'd be a lot more to the story. You know what I'm saying? Not only that, sometimes, let me see. I think you was about to say some medication has steroids in it. So, that alone can, I, you was, you hit it right on the head. 
I've seen it just in time. Like sometimes you can have medical problems and they will give you medication and it will work against you and you will still gain weight. You know what I'm saying? Like medication. And this is why I'm so much into natural herbs and vitamins and things like that. Like you can, you can take something to fix one thing and it'll fuck up something else. But when you got a natural herb, when you got a natural herb though, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So get checked and be adamant with the doctor to check you it can attack your organs thank you miss judy i definitely will i definitely will um alicia said i did diet and exercise i work out at the gym three times a week good for you alicia that's awesome i love my sea moss true slayer says i love my sea moss also take a number of organic herbs period period like you you know I have to get to business and have some discipline. I need to lose some weight. Just lovely me, girl. All of us, girl. <laughs> all of us could use, you know, we could lose five or 10 pounds, girl. But listen, do what you can do and take care of yourself to the best of your ability. But please do not stress about it because no shade. It ain't easy being a woman. And I'm just going to be real with y'all. Not just on the weight. Like, it's a lot. You know, like, we have emotions. Um, Our hormones play into our emotions. Like, it's a wide range of things that that make up a woman, right? And it's a blessing and a beautiful thing to be a woman or whatever. But people don't understand, you know, what all plays into it. And that's why I say just be a little more sensitive, you know, to women and their weight and things like that. Like, let's not attack each other or make fun of each other when it comes to weight or what the way someone looks or whatever, because sometimes people can't help it. Like, yes, there are people who are, um, you know, lazy or they don't, you know, they don't value their health or whatever, right? Like we watch them shows like My 5 and 600 Pound Life and things like that. Like that's a different type of situation because that that don't happen without a lot of poor choices, right? Like you're not going to get 500 pounds from eating a cheeseburger every day or something. But if you eat 10 cheeseburgers a day, like that's a whole different you know what I'm saying? That's a whole different ball game. So I'm not saying in that context, but I'm saying in general, hi, Linnell, baby. Um, but I'm saying in general, like as women, like let's have more grace for each other because a lot of us, like we don't have children. Our bodies have changed. Like y'all, I'm not even in my forties yet and all type of stuff is changing. I'm like, what's going on? My hair, my hair different, the texture different. Like I got eczema now. <laughs> like I got all type of problems. Like I can't eat pizza without having heartburn for 50 hours after that. You know what I'm saying? Like I can't enjoy orange juice no more. I feel like I'm going to die after that. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like things that we used to could enjoy and do we can't do anymore because our body is changing so much as we age and as we you know grow up and and get you know older and wiser in life so it's like just just give each other some grace y'all like instead of you know making comments or or taking a dig at somebody for their weight because we all be going through a lot and we got medical problems that people may or may not know of that could be impacting our weight or we could be doing what we know to do right we're taking our meds and we're doing what they said and we eating right Right, and we walk in and stuff, and the weight's still just chilling. You know what I'm saying? And I, I really feel like, like Miss Judy said, really look into it because it could be another underlying problem that you don't even know about. You know what I'm saying? That could be the reason why your weight is either stagnant or you're gaining weight, or you know, your white your weight is kind of inconsistent. Um, and I will say, last year when I started getting more serious about my weight, I saw a nutritionist, and he said to me, and I'll never forget it, and I'm going to share it with you guys. He said, "Think of your your body like a car, right? And so if you don't get your car serviced, um, you just buy your car and drive it. You never get oil changes. You never do whatever. Um, at some point, your body, your your car is going to break down, right? And so." Um, he was sharing this with me because I was telling him like what they say my weight should be according to the BMI calendar. And my opinion looks crazy. Like I'm like, they're going to think I'm on crack. They're going to think um, <laughs> I'm on drugs or I'm dying from a disease or something. I said, because I have not been that small since I was in like high school. Right. And he said, listen, you got to think about it like this. He said, did you or did you not tell me when you came in here, you've been struggling with your weight up and down, yo-yo dieting and things like that your entire adult life? I was like, yes, that's correct. He said, this is because you are not operating in your BMI. 
I was like, what? He was like, even if you don't get all the way in your BMI, he said, the closer you are to your BMI, the more your body is going to function the correct and proper ways that it needs to. He said, but if you're way in left field, like say your BMI is down here and you weigh out here, he's like, now your body is nowhere near where it's supposed to operate and how it's supposed to function. And this is why you can't get the weight off and keep it off. He said, I'm telling you, if you get your weight down to as close as possible to your BMI, or if not within your BMI range, he said, you will see a major difference in getting the weight off and keeping the weight off. He said, but as long as you stay up way over overweight or above your BMI, you are always, he said, listen to me, you are always going to struggle with your weight. And that was a hard pill to swallow. That was a hard pill to swallow, y'all. But again, you have the information. So what are you going to do with it? What are you going to do with it? Are you going to continue to make excuses? You know what I'm saying? And again, I know it's not easy for everyone, but it, it changed my perspective in, okay, maybe I should take my weight a little more serious and look at other options to help me get the weight off. You know what I'm saying? Being a little more active. Okay. Having a glass of water instead of this apple juice, like little, just little things. You know what I'm saying? Having some egg whites instead of regular eggs, or, you know what I'm saying? Having some fish instead of this, this uh, sausage or, you know, just little small small tweaks, you know what I'm saying, could change everything. Miss Sean said, hell, I have problem losing five pounds. Girl, me and you both. Yes, I get oral steroids as well as steroid injections and epidurals for steroids. Yeah, see? And that's a lot, you know, for your body as far as, you know, weight management and things like that. It makes it hard. It can work against you. Andrea says, hell, I'm not on any medication, but I'm fat. Girl, you is not fat. <laughs> Andrea, you definitely not fat. Um, yeah, it's all about being disciplined. No, for real. And that's easier said than done. But it's just a little bit for y'all to just take into consideration. Yes, definitely pay attention to the side effects. Yes, for real. And pay attention to the meds they give y'all because they'll lie to you just to make you take it. Baby, as soon as they prescribe me something, y'all, I be in my car on Google trying to Google what are the side effects, what's the long-term effects, what's the, you know, the short-term effects. Like, I want to know what could potentially happen to me if I take this medication because they will try to just skim over it and smooth it over like there's nothing wrong. And then, boom, you got all type of problems later. Yes, but don't go live. Her name is Cora. Um, what do you mean don't go live? Like you want me to just do a video or you just want me to look at the story um life with Miss D. Oh wait, you said you're saying you don't go live. Okay, I'm sorry, I think I misunderstood what you're saying. A lot of women start gaining weight because of our darn hormones. Lord, menopausal belly is no joke. Exactly. And that's why I said, and people don't understand that, you know, it's like, it, it's a, it takes a lot to, to be a woman, but obesity, obesity and anorexia is a disease. It is, it is. As you get older, your metabolism slows down. It does. Absolutely. And it's harder to get the weight off. Um, It could be pariasis and mistaken as eczema. Miss Judy, to be real, I think that's what I have. Pariasis. I believe that's what it is to be real. Um, and it doesn't always flare up, but what I've noticed, and this is why I believe it's pariasis, it only flares up with certain foods, right? So if I have a lot of cheese or if I have a lot of dairy and things like that, it'll flare up real bad. So Miss Lisa says, try juicing. Um, I have before, Miss 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 Lisa. The thing for me though with juicing or any type of um thing like that, I I don't like to do things that I can't maintain for a long period of time, right? Because I feel like I work against myself. Like, okay, if I do this now. Yes, I'm getting results now, but as soon as I stop and go back to eating regular foods or whatever, boom, the weight comes back. So I personally try to um, do things that I can maintain over a long period of time so that my weight loss and, you know, the the things that I do accomplish with it is actually like longstanding results. You know what I'm saying? So nutritionists can mess you up. They give a one size fits all dietary plan which each disease is a unique to a person as we, oh, I get it, Miss Judy. And to be real, he didn't, he didn't give me like a, a food or a dietary plan. He was just kind of giving me some tips and pointers on how to jumpstart my weight loss at the time. Um, but you already know, Miss Judy, y'all know what I preach on my channel, baby, do your own research and do not take everything, you know, that people say at face value. Right. And so you can tell me whatever you want to say. I mean, I'm going to take notes and I promise you when I get off, I'm going to go look it up and research it myself. <laughs> 
all the time. Um, like for instance, I've learned or I've been researching um, for the last few months about eating for your blood type. You know what I'm saying? Like I'm doing a lot of research into that to find out, is this something that one, I could do and maintain over a long period of time. And two, like, what are the real true benefits of me eating by my blood type? Like, is that really a thing, you know, or is there real benefits attached to it? So I've been juicing about a year and we'll tell you, or it's actually, you can see a nutritionist. Yeah, I do. I do. Sometimes I see one. I don't see them as much as often now because I feel like I got my flow, but that's definitely an option. The doctors be in my chart is for um, other than blacks. I agree. I agree. And that's why Andre, I ain't girl. I ain't listening. He crazy. I'm not going to be 140 pounds. He crazy. I'll be sticks and bones. <laughs> not only that, my man ain't going. He'll be like, what? <laughs> no shade. Like he already was like, don't lose no more weight. Cause I already lost 60 pounds. <laughs> He's like, hold on now. Don't get crazy. Everyone is different. Miss Judy. Yeah, for sure. Um, Lisa, um, I'm definitely about to get going this time. Yeah, for sure. And like I said, just do little, just do little things, right? Like, cause that's, I think that's where a lot of us fall off. Like we start trying to do something extreme. Like I'm not going to drink no more soda. I'm never going to do this. Again. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And then damn two weeks in, you like, fuck it, I'm gonna have a soda. And then you drink 10. So it's like, just do little things and take it day by day. Right? Like I'll do, I'll like literally y'all like my food and choices and things like that like I do it moment by moment like okay girl so you really gonna have this coffee or you gonna go in here and drink this protein shake like how ridiculous are you gonna be today you gonna do right or you gonna go have this coffee and if you gonna have this coffee how many coffees have you had this week you know what I'm saying like that's literally how I talk to myself and that's how I'm able to talk myself down from you know falling off on my my goals and stuff when I turned 50, I was like, damn, the different illnesses show out. Thank goodness I still get compliments. No, for real. You know, like it it can be a lot and it's overwhelming. And that's why I said, just take care of your health while you can, y'all. Because think about it. Like there's people who, um, there's people who, um, like getting real serious car accidents or for instance, think about COVID, right? When COVID happened, people were losing their lives and you got to think the ones who had the most compromised help, right? Like they were smokers or they drunk real heavy or whatever. Their body couldn't handle it. Like the body couldn't even fight off the disease. You know what I'm saying? And so that's why I say it's so important to take care of yourself, not just because I want to be fine for the summer and get the summer bod. It's, it, it's so much deeper than that, right? Like your overall health, your cholesterol, your blood pressure, all these different things. So when you are in compromising, you know, situations or your health is compromised, your immunity can fight it. You know what I'm saying? And we don't look at it like that. I juice every day and that helps me, Alicia. You know what, Alicia? I'm going to look into that. I used to juice. I used to. I might do that. I haven't done that in a while. Um, I do. I really just watch my portions and stop when I'm full. That's my major thing right now. Um, and I will occasionally intermittent fast and that helps me a lot. Lisa, I've been to multiple and all give the same. And I listened to them. I would have been on insulin. I learned from a group on Facebook how to care for my diabetes and learn my food sensitivities. Yes, for sure. For sure. Um, got you, Miss Judy. <laughs> Andrea laughing at me. <laughs> uh, <laughs> not y'all. Y'all hate to be in my calendar, I see. <laughs> hey, so say the BMI chart could kiss my fat ass. <laughs> <laughs> girl period no trust me y'all i'm not trust me i'm not at all advocating for the bmi chart because trust me i feel y'all like i already get it like it is definitely giving girl no because i show was like no sir I, i'm not shooting for 140 pounds i'm sorry sir i don't want to be 140 pounds but thank you anyway <laughs> I eat mostly salads, fruit, and drink lemon water. Exactly, Alicia, which is so super doable. I think the hardest thing for me is I get bored with things fast, right? So I can't eat the same thing over and over and over without, um, you know, eventually being like, fuck this. I don't want this no more. The food mod diet will open your eyes about the healthy foods that cause bloating. Ugh. See what I'm saying, Miss Judy? And then to be real with you, I also be feeling like, um, what is the point? Like everything is bad for you at this point. <laughs> so it's like, I guess take the lesser of two evils. Like it's frustrating, you know, like, I mean, it used to be great to eat fresh, you know, fruits and veggies out of the grocery store, but hell they be spraying shit on that now. Like, 
I just feel like at this point, you have to do what's best for you. But at the same time, do your best, you know, to, to take care of yourself. Because, baby, at this point, I done seen all type of articles. You can't eat cereal. You can't drink milk. You can't, like, you can't eat or drink nothing. You're going to die, according to them, <laughs> no matter what you do. Actually, I had my kids late. My daughter at 41 and my son at 48. So my weight stuck. Shake my head. And I always try hard to get it down. I am 180. Woo child. See, Sabrina? That's why I said. And it's like, give people grace because you don't know why they are the way that they are where they are, right? Miss Sean, welcome to the good side. I love you, girl. Ashley Chaz, do what's best for you. No, for sure. For sure, Lisa. You already know how it goes over here. Haven't touched the soda in five years. What? That is awesome, Lisa. Girl, I wish. I'm going to be like you when I grow up. But I ain't grew up yet, girl, because I'm definitely going to have me a soda. <laughs> I'm going to definitely have me a soda, Miss Lisa. But you are my inspiration. Black coffee actually has medical benefits. It's better than better to make coffee at home so you can control the creamer and sugar content. I agree, Miss Judy. But listen, girl, I'm not drinking no black coffee. <laughs> I'm just not, girl. Listen, I'm going to just pray to the good Lord and enjoy my Starbucks or enjoy my Dunkin'. <laughs> no shade, though. I um I do have a Keurig, and sometimes I do, you know, make my coffee. Um, I had also found, like, a sugar-free option that was really dope. Well, I'm going to be real with you. Like, it's not something that, like, after a while I get. I only get, I get, like, burnt out, y'all. At least I only drink ginger ale. I love me some ginger ale. I like fruity sodas, though. I like ginger ale. I like orange, grape, pineapple. Like, I like them type of sodas. And I do drink soda, but I don't drink it often. Just because the, the carbonation just really fucks me up. No shade. So, I will have a soda, but I don't drink it often. Like, I really like... I'm a, I'm a juice girl. Like, I love juice. My favorite juice, y'all, is Simply Fruit Punch. O-M-G. Y'all know, like, Simply Lemonade in, a, in, the, in the grocery store? Y'all need to try Simply Fruit Punch. Oh, my God. And it's got pineapple in it. I love pineapples, y'all. Like, it is my favorite fruit of all time. I could eat pineapples all day long, especially if they're cold. So, <laughs> um, hi, Sonia. How you doing, baby? Uh, Lisa says, yes, Judy, I brew my own coffee. I do sometimes, y'all, but no shade. It's easier to get in that drive-through line. And you know what's crazy, y'all? I don't even finish the coffee. So me and my one client was laughing because I was like, girl, it's got to be about the experience. Because like you will have a whole hissy fit like a little child if you ain't had your coffee <laughs> in a couple of days. At least I will. And then I'll get that coffee, y'all, and be sipping on it for a couple of hours. And I still only drunk half, but I have to have my coffee. So I was like, it's got to be about the experience, especially like when it's... um starbucks and stuff because starbucks be doing too much like to be real i don't even care for their coffee much i go to them if i can't get to like duncan or somewhere like that but my favorite so far has been duncan i like duncan coffee um some people still have overall illnesses due to having covid yep it messes you up yo it can it compromises you added sugar and ginger ale is 85 percent miss lisa why are you doing this to me why miss lisa just let me enjoy my 85% sugar. <laughs> I'm just playing. Make your own ginger ale, sparkling water, and fresh ginger. Oh, Miss Miss Lisa, that sounds like way too much work. Girl, we already got to cook for these kids. I don't want to have to make my own ginger ale. I could just pop that can open. Girl. Being my chart is completely unrealistic and frankly offensive. No, for real, true slayer. It is offensive. Like, it's like, hold on. Like, who made this and why? Because <laughs> it don't make no sense. I'm like, first of all, why is this even saying that an adult person should weigh this? Like, this is like the like 140 is like the size of one of my teenagers. You know what I'm saying? It's like, come on, why should I be the size of a teenager? Good morning, gorgeous. Hi, baby. As soon as we stop getting frost, I'm growing a garden. Love the gardening group on Facebook, and I try to get my meat from natural farmers. Exactly, Miss Judy. And I'm not going to lie, y'all. That's part of the reason why I'm so excited to go to Germany, because they don't put preservatives in their food, or at least not a lot of preservatives in their food. And um, like little things, like for instance, my husband has auto start on his vehicle, and like we have to get that um, deactivated. And no shade, I was pissed, y'all, because I was like, what the fuck? I'm like, it's snow in Germany. 
Like, why can't we have auto start? Like, I'm not cranking this car up and it's cold outside, <laughs> you know. But then I started thinking, like, you know what? I grew an appreciation for it because that means that they take pollution and things like that serious. And so I'm really looking forward to, you know, just having a different, more healthy life, you know, across the board, the food, the air, everything, right? And it's not perfect, but I'm looking forward to the change because, you know, it, unfortunately, it's just a, it's not valued. Let me just say that. It's just not valued very much in the world. Menopause and my daughter taking sick. I got big as a chunky monkey. Y'all, Andrea is so cap, y'all. She is not big as no monkey, you know, chunky monkey or whatever she's talking about. Andrea is not big like that, y'all. <laughs> Andrea, girl, stop it. <laughs> Uh, true slayer being, I'm sure when I did way with the chart stated, I was skin and bones. Exactly, Miss Judy. And I'm sure I'm a solid five, five. <laughs> I'm a short mama. So what's your remedy for baby weight, Ashley? Um, I'm gonna be real with you, Sabrina, girl. I am not nobody's uh, health guru and girl, I'm still on the struggle bus too. So all I can tell you is what I do. I just pay attention to my full cues. You know what I'm saying? Like when I'm eating, um, I eat on smaller plates. Um, when I feel full, I stop eating. I don't care how good the food is. I stop eating. I will put it away and eat the rest later. Um, I try to do things like not eating so late. If I do eat late in the evening, it's usually I try to make it more like a protein snack. So like I may have two boiled eggs or I love those little P3 snacks where it's got like the almonds and like the cheese and um, meat chunks in it. Um, you know, something you can grab on the go. I also really like uh, beef jerky like in the little go packs. Um, like I just, honestly, I just eat smaller portions. I'm just going to be real with you. Like I don't, I don't eat anything fancy. It's not like, oh, I don't eat this and I don't eat, girl, I eat whatever I want. <laughs> I just eat it in moderation. Like that's the biggest thing um, for me. And I try to stay hydrated um, and I just don't overdo it, you know? And I pull back, like, as far as sugars and stuff. Like, I love coffee, y'all. I wish I could have it every day. And I probably could if I would do it sugar-free and stuff. But, girl, I, no, I need the sugar. And I need the creamer and, and the whipped cream and all that. <laughs> so um, I just have reduced, um, you know, my amount of coffee intake. You know, like, I just I just try to find balance, right? Like, I'm still going to have me some Cheetos. But instead of having the whole bag and eating them out sitting in my bed or whatever, I might buy, like, the little small individual bags so that it's poor control, you know, it's like well, 110 calories in a bag um, versus getting a whole big bag, you know, and then if I do get the big bag, I will literally count out whatever the serving is. So if it's 23 chips, bitch, I got 23 Cheetos in my Ziploc, <laughs> you know, so I just do little stuff like that. Um, and then obviously just staying active. I'm honestly not a fan of working out. I go through spurts though, like where I'm working out real heavy, and I'm real committed and motivated, and then I'll fall off. So those times when I fall off and I'm not interested, I will just be more active. Like I'll take my ass to the mall and walk for two hours, or you know, I will do other stuff to to find ways to be active. You know, and that's that's pretty much all I do. Hi, Josephine, baby, how are you? Be careful with the sugar-free stuff. A lot of it's packaged with sodium. The levels can cause serious water. Exactly, Miss Judy. And that's my thing. And that's why I stopped with the sugar-free stuff. Because I feel like it's the same way with diet sodas. They say it's worse for you than some of the other things. And so that's why I fell off with that sugar-free coffee stuff. But sometimes I do occasionally will make it just so... Like when I'm doing too much with the coffee and I'm having way too many coffees, I'll be like, yeah, let me just try to do the sugar-free option so that... um you know, I'm not like overkill with the sugar. I drink the rice coffee. It has a lot of health benefits and probiotics. Alicia, I want to try that one. I've also, I've tried like a local um, one from my grocery store. Um, and it's very similar to that where you just add water. Is that how you make the rice coffee? Because it's like a mushroom coffee or something, right? I want to try it. Um, but I ain't gonna lie. It depends on the date. It, it depends on the date. <laughs> Because some days I'm like, this ain't bad, but I don't want this. I want real coffee. <laughs> so <laughs> uh, Simply Fruit Punch is the best fruit punch. No, for real. See what I'm saying, True Slayer? See, I knew there was a reason why I rocks with you, girl. Lord have mercy, girl. I I have a heart attack when I be like, babe, can you fill up? Can you put my Simply Fruit Punch in my Stanley? And he be like, babe, you out. I'm like, what? Like, what do you mean? 
y'all, I can't breathe. I'm like, oh, how could you, how could you let me run out of fruit punch? Like, what do you mean? Y'all be so dramatic. Y'all, he'd be like, bro, just relax. <laughs> I be hot if it's out of stock. Girl, you be the curse at me, honey, because I love Simply Fruit Punch. Y'all better try it. Yeah, it's my favorite ash. Yeah, that be in my calendar do be way off. Definitely not made for us. I agree. I agree. Health is wealth. We have to take better care of ourselves. Absolutely, Alicia. Absolutely. Is the move to Germany indefinite, if I may ask? Um, Maybe true slayer we have not decided um so we are moving to germany for my husband's job um and so he is going to be there at least three years working his job um i'm not even gonna hold you y'all if i go over there and i like it a lot i might stay i'm gonna just be real with you because maybe the u.s is ghetto i love it here but chill it's a big ghetto like the u.s need to be unplugged and plugged back in I love pineapples. Also, pineapples are great for inflammation, but high in sugar. Be careful with juicing too much because colitis due to acid. No, I agree. And honestly, uh, Madeline, when I do juice, I don't use um, like pineapples and stuff like that. I use, um, you know, like the more healthier fruits uh, um, and like other stuff like kale and spinach. And like I do that type of stuff with the juicing. Um, cause I know, and honestly, all fruits be loaded with sugar, even in their natural state, they have so much sugar. So yeah, I'm aware. And honestly, that's why I steer clear of a lot of smoothies and things like that. Like I used to really love Smoothie King. Um, but I don't, I don't really frequent it very much anymore. Cause it is so much sugar y'all and them smoothies. It's ridiculous. And they advertise it. They manipulate y'all art of manipulation <laughs> into thinking that that shit is really healthy for you, but it'd be loaded with sugar. Uh, Madeline, yep, I can only have the berry family because I'm diabetic. Yeah, for sure. Hi, Unchosen. Hi, baby. How are you? I'm a little late in the chat. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm trying to catch up, y'all. Uh, let me see. I heard that. I need to do that 23 chip thing. No, for real. Good morning, gorgeous. And don't get me wrong. There's some times where I'm like, oh, hell no, girl. I need 23 more chips, girl, because that wasn't enough. <laughs> You know what I'm saying? But if I do do that, I try to do that earlier in the day, right? Because like when you do it late at night, whatever you eat at night, that shit sits on you. And I think that's where a lot of us mess up. So if I am going to be ridiculous like that, like for instance today, and this is what pisses me off with weight gain. I've been so busy today, y'all, with clients and stuff. I literally have only had, um, I think, some bacon and a donut. Like, that's all I've had all day. So I still have not eaten dinner because I wanted to knock this live out. So I will probably eat dinner when I get off. But because it's getting late, I'm going to have a smaller dinner. You know what I'm saying? Because it's getting late and you can't eat that heavy food and then go lay your ass down because it's going to sit on you. It's going to be right there when you wake up. You know, so I agree. Like the 23 chip thing, it can be hard sometimes. But what y'all got to know, a lot of stuff with the weight and stuff like that, it be mind over matter, right? We, in our mind, if we honest, a lot of us, we grew up and we were forced to eat everything on our plate, right? You're not getting up to you eat all your food type deal. So now we struggle with that in adulthood because we think, okay, I have to eat this food because if I don't eat it right now, I'm wasting it. No, girl, put your food away, girl. Nobody going to eat your food. You can eat it tomorrow. You know what I'm saying? But we, our mind has been trained that we can't, that's wasteful. You know, we'll convince ourselves that we are ungrateful and there's hungry people in the world, all this shit, all because we want to be greedy. <laughs> like, no, you got to eat this. It's people that starving. No, bitch, you can eat that in the morning, girl. Like, it's still not, it ain't went nowhere, girl. You ain't wasted nothing or none of that. While being every woman is challenging to find time to exercise. Absolutely, melanin. And that's why I say I'll do stuff like, you know, because think about it. We be so busy. Some of us work. We walking upstairs. We walking around the building. You know what I'm saying? So you just get your movement in wherever you can. You know what I'm saying? Shit, it'll be nothing for me to be about to get in the shower. I'll throw, I'll do like 25 squats real quick. You know what I'm saying? Or I'll do 10 or 20 burpees or, you know what I'm saying? Something like that. Just any amount of movement just to keep your body moving. You know what I'm saying? And um, your joints lubricated <laughs> so your knees ain't cracking when you bend down and all that shit. Like that type of stuff is all great. So one of the best ways to exercise that you'll be excited to do is to dance every day for an hour. Exactly, Miss Judy. I used to kill some um, Zumba. Hi, Amber. Uh, y'all, I'm driving now, y'all. Okay. <laughs> all right, Andrea, be safe. What's up, Amber? How you doing, baby? 
Um, but no, uh, Judy, I used to really do a lot of Zumba, y'all, and I loved it. I had found me a dope ass group, baby. We was in a girl, it felt like a dance party. <laughs> <laughs> and it was like a group of us and we'd be like you going you going and so we would all like meet up and it was just our thing like we knew what the days were and we it was like a party y'all it was like an adult party I had so much fun so I love dancing love it and my girls do too um and when the smoke clear and the residue clear from um the saga a little more or whatever, I will eventually start sharing my girls' uh, YouTube pages on here so y'all can see them. But they they are all about, like, dancing and TikToks and, you know, just full of life and things like that um, or whatever. Let me see. What is the name of that coffee? It's called Rise. Uh, yeah, I think Miss Sean wrote it. I drink Rise daily but it doesn't taste like coffee at all to me i'm just trying to stay alive <laughs> miss true slayer what does it taste like it's probably all watered down oh that'd be the struggle because i'm like it's it's something about real coffee right like it's just this certain taste that you can't even describe but you know when it when something ain't it <laughs> um melanin yes those line dances will work yes i want and i love I love the um the line dances, yo. Like I'm like that's so. I think it's so cool. I'm like, ooh, I want a line dance. <laughs> I love it, y'all. When I was a kid, I did all type of dance teams and shit like that. Like I, I had a good time. You can get it from Amazon. Yeah, I'm gonna look into it. Rise, you have to make sure you make it tasteful. I do add a little sugar and cream. Oh, okay, Miss Sean. So you tried rise too. Uh-uh, girl. If I gotta add sugar and cream, girl, I'm gonna just stick to my dunking. I'm just saying. <laughs> Cause I know me, I'm gonna waste my money. Like, and then I'm gonna be mad. Cause it's like, girl, now you done bought all this stuff and you ain't even gonna drink it. A Stokes said she add cream with her hers too. See, <laughs> slow down, eat slowly, eat to live, don't live to eat. Period, melanin. That that's the ticket right there. That's literally it. Like it had got to a point where I was reading a lot, and they were saying like you should count your bites, right? Like because sometimes we be woofing, scarfing food down, and you don't realize like it can help your digestive system a whole lot more if you actually chew your food and break it down. You know what I'm saying? Like we just be so hungry. We chew it two or three times, swallow, bite again. You know what I'm saying? Now you got all that shit sitting on your digestive system and you wondering why you constipated or your system is all backed up and jacked up. And you know what I'm saying? It's just little things like that that can really help and improve like the way you digest food and you know just the way your body processes it all. Yes, I like rice, but it tastes more like a herbal tea than coffee to me. Oh, girl, no, ma'am. Thank you for letting me know. <laughs> nope, 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 nope. I was afraid of that, though, because I do. I try one that is similar to rice, but it's not called rice. It's in my local grocery store. And like I said, I can tolerate it sometimes. I ain't going to lie, y'all. It takes me a long time to get that coffee down. Like, it's not nasty, but it's just not coffee. Like, it's not the coffee that I'm used to. So... Like, I struggle with that. So I think I'm just going to stick to what I've been doing, which is just limiting my amount of coffee. Like, maybe just get my one or two a week and just get the real deal, holy feel, <laughs> versus me trying to do these damn mushroom coffees and they taste like water. Like, I'm cool. <laughs> I started like... I started liking line dances after being on a cruise with Big Nucci. He is so down to her. Miss Judy. There's this one I follow here on YouTube. You would love it then. Like, it's like two African American younger guys, but they always have like this cowboy hat on, they shirt off jeans and like cowboy boots. Girl, they be killing it out here. Like, it's so mesmerizing to watch them dance because they be like in unison and like they flow. It's so dope. I was like, yo, this is so dope to see black men like dance like this you know like the rhythm be on point like they could take they could teach a few women a few things no shade i put honey and unsweetened almond milk to make it a latte okay see that would be me <laughs> that would be me i'm an advocate for coffee period i'm chosen girl you better tell them like they playing <laughs> I need the real deal, baby. Y'all can miss me with that rise, bitch. If it tastes like some tea, uh uh. No, nope. I'm finna pour that right out. <laughs> Miss Sean said, Coffee give me the jitters. Oh, Miss Sean, not you, an amateur. No way. I'm just playing. <laughs> you know what? No shade, girl. I remember when coffee used to give me the jitters, but listen, I'm an OG. 
I'm my OG girl. It don't even it don't even wake me up, make me tired, nothing, girl. Matter of fact, I could probably take a nap after drinking coffee. It don't do nothing to me. <laughs> it don't do nothing to me. That's why I said I'm like, this is a mental thing. Like I feel like coffee is a drug or something. I just gotta have my coffee, uh. Like if I don't have coffee after like three days, I have an inter- I have a terrible migraine. Like that's how bad it is for me. I have to have coffee. So I've gotten better, y'all. I've stopped buying Dunkin' and stuff like that, but I do still buy my little, I buy the ones from home, like the Starbucks, the little four-pack um, cold coffee, because I like cold coffee too, y'all. I don't drink hot coffee. I like cold coffee. And so what I've noticed with the cold ones is I won't drink a whole one. I'll, I might, my, my intent be to drink a whole one, but I'll sip on it for most of the morning and I end up only drinking half of it. And so that works for me because I still get my coffee take, like I get my coffee, uh, fix or whatever but without all the extra you know i think i may have seen them if it's the two i'm thinking of yes they be getting it yes miss judy they've gone viral a few times like they be killing it hey stokes you don't like coffee what what girl huh you is sleep girl i'm just playing <laughs> coffee tastes good but have me wide open like I'm crazy. Chill. I wish Miss. <laughs> I wish Miss Sean. But look how crazy I am, y'all. I love coffee, but I'm scared of energy drinks. I will not drink an energy drink. I done seen so many bad stories where like people done had heart attacks and all type of shit. So I'm like, uh uh-uh, uh, nope, I don't want to die. So miss me with the energy drinks. But baby, I will dog some coffee. And it's so funny because it's kind of like similar, I guess, depending on what type of coffee you have. Sometimes I put a shot of espresso in my eyes to get my coffee fixed. Period. See, see, True Slayer, you be, <laughs> we be out of eye. Be like, True Slayer, I'm going to be, <laughs> girl, I'm going to have to message you and be like, girl, how do I make this rise taste right? <laughs> like, girl, help me, girl, because this ain't it, girl. I need, this don't taste like no coffee, girl. Like, I need some coffee. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Let me see. Hi, Tawana. How you doing, baby? I drank coffee one time and I was shaking so bad I never drank it again. Oh, Robin, dang. <laughs> okay, no shade, though. Like, if I drink coffee early in the morning and I don't eat anything most of the day, I will start getting the jitters. But literally, y'all, ain't nothing that a little glass of Simply Fruit Punch can't handle. <laughs> I just be needing, you know, something to take the edge off. But as long as I eat while I'm drinking my coffee or whatever, like, I'll be cool. I'll be chilling. Tawana says, I am drinking a Red Bull. <laughs> Tawana. <laughs> Girl, I am so scared of them things. I remember we had went to, like, a fair or something, and they was like, like you know how they be trying to get you to sample their stuff or whatever. And they was really trying to convince me, like, we're giving them away free. Just try one. This one's really good. They was like, do you drink coffee? I'm like, yeah, I love coffee. They was like, we got a coffee flavor one. Blah, blah, blah. I was like, sir, I'm not going to drink it, sir. Just keep it. I'm not doing it. I'm like, look, I already drink way too much coffee. If I drink this damn energy drink, yo, I'm going to have a heart attack. I'm cool. No, nope, you're not going to kill me. It's not happening. I'm not, I'm not going to die today. I'm sorry. It's not going to happen. The key to an energy drink is to take a sip here and there throughout the day. The problem is people chug the energy. I agree, Miss Judy, because I mean, mugs be drinking that mug like it's a soda. <laughs> like it's on pop. Like, baby, relax, girl. You is not supposed to, like, you supposed to, you know, babysit it. Like, you just be, babies chug. And then they'll open up another one. What? No, we. I could do coffee, but scared as hell of energy drinks. No, for real. Like, melanin. I know you laughing, but I'm serious, girl. I'm petrified. I'm like, uh-uh. I ain't seen nobody have no heart attack from drinking no fucking cup of coffee. But them damn energy drinks, nope. Nope. You will not get me. I'm chosen to say I'm on my fourth cup. <laughs> See, I'm chosen, period. I'm chosen to know what's going on. Like, you got me cooking. Mm-hmm. She said, I start when I get up. Because listen, hi, Cheryl. How are you, baby? I, girl, I got to have my coffee. I ain't even finna hold you. I got to have some coffee. I've just been trying to do better about the amounts that I have. I've cut back on the amount or whatever. But, girl, I got to have it. I'm sorry. 
I'm scared of energy drinks. I'm afraid it's going to explode on me. No, for real, Miss <laughs> Sean. I'm telling y'all, y'all think I'm exaggerating. It's been some really crazy stories about energy drinks. I'm telling y'all what I know. Like, nah, -uh. you got me messed up. I, nope. I don't, I don't need no energy. Okay. I just don't want to have a headache. So just give me my coffee. So I ain't got to have no headache and I can be, you know, graceful this morning and not crabby for no reason. I used to drink about 12 cups a day, no food, just coffee <laughs> and crushed ice. <laughs> oh, I'm chosen. You know what? My dad used to do that, though. And then his medical started taking a hit. So now he he can't have it. But he was like that. I'm talking all day. That's all he would drink is coffee. I'm like, damn, dad, you not hungry? He was like, no, because when you drink coffee, like you don't have no appetite. You just you just want coffee. I don't know what was in that coffee, but never again. Oh, Robin. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Lord. Um, Andrea says, love you, Ashley. Everyone in chat, I've made it to my destination. Okay, girl, be safe. Um, I'm actually about to end this anyway, y'all. I done did too much, y'all. I'm supposed to be talking about manipulation. We don't have to talk about coffee. Girl, I need to get my life together. And my foot burnt up. Like, Jesus Christ. <laughs> Coffee is bad if you have acid reflux too. Well, girl, I wouldn't even know, girl, because that's the one thing, girl, that don't be messing with my uh, acid reflux. So listen, I'm scared to even repeat that because if I start getting heartburn from coffee, oh my God, I'm about to, <laughs> y'all, that would hurt my feelings for real. That would hurt my feelings so bad. Like, what do you mean? Baby, please, I'll pop me a gas X and still drink my coffee. <laughs> <laughs> like girl take this gas ex girl you'll be all right you're gonna be okay girl you want this heartburn or you want this or you want this migraine like girl you better take this gas ex so anyway let me see cheryl said i love coffee don't do energy drinks because a guy who went to high school with my son practicing for football drank too many and passed away on the field see what i'm saying cheryl see what i'm saying y'all thought i was playing <laughs> I told you, like, people really be losing their life with these energy drinks. And I think it's like Miss Judy said, people be using them inappropriately. You know what I'm saying? Like, knowing they ain't got no sleep or not taking care of themselves. And then they try to drink these energy drinks to basically be the energizer bunny. And, baby, that's just not good. It just doesn't work out for you, you know, in the long run. So that is what I, I don't play around with them energy drinks. I don't know what they put in them that makes people, you know, lose their life or have heart problems or heart palpitations and all that type of stuff. But I do not play. <laughs> I don't play with no energy drink. Nope. 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 Them five hour energies too, that be at the, the little convenience stores at the counter and stuff. I don't play like that. So but anyway, I appreciate y'all for kicking in with me. I've been on live a little longer than I expected <laughs> um, per usual here lately. But I do appreciate y'all. Please make sure you like the video on your way in or out. Um, I do believe I have concluded my live for today. But please, I know we've been kicking shit and laughing and talking about coffee and other little things about life, weight loss. Like our, this whole conversation, I took a whole different turn. But um, just please make sure. Um, you got the gist of the live, and that is the art of manipulation. Pay attention to when you're being manipulated, y'all. And don't don't let anybody pull the wool over your eyes because, like I said, manipulators are great at what they do because they have to make you believe that they are not exactly who they are. You know what I'm saying? Like, oh, I'm in your best interest when really they're in their own best interest. So please stay woke. Pay attention to that. Don't be no fool, y'all. Like, it's definitely happening right before our eyes all over social media. Like I said, we can't even figure out if we're watching a skit or a real life situation, you know, and things like that. So keep your eyes open. Keep your minds open. Uh, protect your peace always. Um, and uh, I think that's all I have for you. I love you guys. And I will catch y'all on my next broadcast. Um, if you are not subscribed, please make sure that you do. Make sure you hit that like button. Thank you so much, Miss Sean, and all of my other moderators that have helped me. This has been a very great, peaceful live. I appreciate each and every one of y'all for kicking it with me. Um, and I look forward to kicking it with y'all again shout out to you angie again and so many others i love y'all i appreciate y'all i see you guys and with that being said i am going to end this live i love y'all talk to y'all on the next one bye